In the first example we gave on bending moments, we considered the case where we had a simply supported beam. So pin at one support, roller at the other support, subject to a point load in the middle. And we got the resulting bending moment diagram. to be a linear variation of the bending moment and we chose this to be positive and draw our axes going downwards so that the bending moment was on the tension side of the beam in the following tutorial on from that, we considered then the case where we had the same beam, but we now considered more loads upon that beam. Instead of W, we had W upon 3, W upon 3, W upon 3, and we found the bending moment change how steep it was as the loads came off this was the linear sections so we can imagine if we just had the point load in the center but then as we hit the new point loads we had a reduction in the gradient so now we're going to go and take this to the extreme case where we have an infinite number of point loads along the beam, i.e. we have a uniformly distributed load. So we'll draw the scenario that we're considering. So that is simply supported beam, again. So pin support on the left hand side, roller on the right hand side, doesn't matter which way around. And instead of drawing a series of point loads or lots of them, we Sometimes choose to use a simplified notation and it's kind of like bubbles along the beam because it's quicker to draw. And this has an intensity of little w. So this is A at the left hand side, B at the right hand side, and the beam has a dimension of L. As with the previous examples we first need to calculate the reactions so the reactions and we're only going to consider the vertical reactions we can see that the horizontal reaction would be equal to zero so we have and let's, quick, let's just draw quickly the free body diagram for the whole beam we have W, we have R, B, Y, and R, A, Y. So to calculate the reactions, we'll use some of the forces in the Y direction. So we have R, A, Y plus R, B, Y pointing upwards must be equal to W, the load intensity, multiplied by the distance that that's applied to, which is L. And we can then use symmetry, or we can take moments about a point on the beam to prove that RAY equals RBY. So therefore, we get that RAY equals RBY, which equals WL upon 2. So 50% to either side of the beam. And now we move on to the method of sections. So you see we normally draw lines where there's a change in the loading. So we have a point load here and the beginning of the UDL. As we move along the beam, we just have the UDL. We have no dramatic change in the loading, just a continuous UDL. So we, the next time we have to consider is B. So we can consider the beam in one go. So let's proceed to method of sections. 
and we only have one section to consider so somewhere along the beam let's draw the free body diagram so from a move along the beam perform a cut along that beam and then we have w little w l upon two is the reaction at the point we're considering where we've made the cut we have a moment m x and let's draw our coordinates so m x so this is the distance x from a draw the other way round the diff, diff, distance x all the way to this reaction and the udl w acting upon that okay you might also want to draw the free body diagram in a slightly different way which is you draw your section of the beam again still got mx still got your reaction force which is wl upon two but now you might choose to put your equivalent load which is w times x acting at the centroid of that load which now means that this distance is x upon 2 and likewise this distance here is x upon 2 okay so let's go and write the moment equation we'll take moments about x so taking moments about x mx must be equal to wl upon 2 multiply by the lever arm x minus w times x which is the loading multiply by the lever arm to the point x which is x upon 2. I'm going to tidy that up slightly so we get that m of x equals wlx upon 2 minus wx squared upon 2. And this is applicable now. Let's write down between x equals naught and L, so all the way along the beam. And the first thing to notice is that indeed we have a term in x squared, so this function is quadratic. So now we're going to proceed to work out what would the maximum moment be? And we can use intuition that this maximum moment would actually happen at the distance L upon 2. So let's calculate that. So M at L upon 2. So we're going to substitute in the equation above that X equals L upon 2. So we have M L upon 2 equals W L upon 2 multiplied by L upon 2 minus w upon 2 multiplied by l upon 2 all squared which equals w l squared upon 4 minus w l squared upon 8 and we can tidy that up further to be w l squared upon 8 and let's label that as m max w l squared upon 8 and again this is one of those significant results that you use day in day out if you're a structural engineer in particular because we encounter the situation where we have a uniform load upon a beam all the time okay so we're going to carry on now and actually draw the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram so as we've done previously let's draw the original situation to remind ourselves so we have the reaction forces which was wl upon 2 and wl upon 2 and the udl W going all the way across the beam and we draw straight lines going down the page 
again and up then we normally draw these straight lines down the page where there's going to be a change in the situation but we also know that we have a maximum bending moment at the center so we're going to draw that on our page as well and let's draw an x-axis across the page so the x-axis has dimensions x which could be in meters or feet or whatever units you're using and we've seen that this was a quadratic function and we know that it has to be zero here and it will come back to zero at the other end as well we can draw a sketch quadratic function and again we're drawing this bending moment diagram on the tension side of the beam if it helps you can draw your positive axes pointing downwards and label that as positive we can also dimension up that this value is going to be WL squared upon 8. And we're also going to draw the shear force diagram for this beam. And we remember that we had WL upon 2 pointing upwards on this side. We have WL upon 2 pointing upwards on this side. And in between we have a linear variation of the shear force and the shear force if you draw it correctly goes through the x-axis so this is the shear force or V and it goes through the x-axis at L upon 2 so the maximum bending moment as we've said is when the shear force equals zero so that's at L upon two so this is L upon two this distance and this distance as well is L upon two so we have a uniform variation of the loading a linear variation of the shear force and that has resulted in a quadratic variation of the bending moment